Hey everyone, the controversy of what Kanye West said on TMZ about slavery being a choice is still going on. People are still talking about, about it. And I thought, why is this hanging around so much? How come people just don't drop it? So now we have Teneche Coates talking about it. He wrote about it in The Atlantic and managed to hit worldwide Twitter trend, okay? Earlier today, May 7th. I thought, what is going on? Why are so many people upset that Kanye West said slavery was a choice on TMZ? Particularly so many of us black folks. And I believe I figured it out. Teneche wrote a piece in The Atlantic that I completely disagree with, and I'll get to the reason why by way of this story. In 2015, I covered the Oakland Raiders naming Jack Del Rio head coach. After the press conference, a group of us were standing around, media types, and talking about the press conference and all the stuff that went along with that, you know? And one of the folks in the group said, oh, this is bad. And I said, what? He goes, this. And I said, what? And he goes, you know, this. And then I realized what he was saying. And what he meant was all of us as black media people standing together, talking to each other. I thought that idea had went away a long, long time ago. And I was mad. I said, hey, you know what? Don't ever express that point of view again. There's nothing wrong with black folks talking to each other and assembling. Nothing. He goes, I know. I said, yeah, I know, but don't think that way, okay? I was really upset about that. In that context, I look at how people reacting to what Kanye said. And first of all, Teneche Coates is wrong. Kanye West does not want white freedom. Kanye West is simply poking the bear. He doesn't like being black in the way that he believes whites view blacks, okay? As less than, you know, not enough money, not enough of this, and so on and so on, okay? But again, it's his view of being black is not is in relation to what he believes whites think. Similarly, Deniche's view of being black can be expressed without his saying something insulting about someone white, like the whiteness of things and all this stuff. That he might think sounds cool, but really sounds hateful. It just comes off as hateful. It comes off as if you like racist, okay? Just being honest. So, the problem is that in 2018, today, many of us don't know who we are as black people, and we only know being black in the context of someone who's white. When I was coming up in Chicago, I went to Avalon Park Elementary, we got elementary school, we got the Black National Anthem, and basically I was drilled with what black culture was at a very young age. But think about the times. I was born in 62. The Civil Rights Amendment was signed in 64. The Watts riots were later that decade. Of course, riots in Chicago and other big cities where I, I lived in Chicago, right? It was a time when you knew as a black person that you were marginalized by the greater society. You knew that. Now, Coming out of that, when I went to, when we went to California, I started the Star Trek Club with a friend of mine, Bill Boyd and Lars Frickman. My friend Lars, Lars died in his sleep two weeks ago. White. Bill, white. We had our own little oasis, our club. We started in 1975, diverse in keeping with Star Trek's ideology. We define who we are beyond color. So much so that, for example, when Bill Lars and I were members of the bike club in, at Skyline High School in 1978, and I was the president, we wanted to go a direction that was less tra than traditional, right? Eugene Rockman, my drafting teacher, who was our sponsor, he says, well, we always go in this other direction. And I said, well, as president, I said we can go in this direction. And Rockman's response was, and he's older white, he says, well, 
you're the first black president. And Bill, who's white, said in his very deep voice that he still has today and had back then when he was, what, 16, said, what does that have to do with anything? That was us, okay? So I'm not saying that we're better. I'm just saying this is the, a way that I came up that causes me to say this. We are still, as a group of people, a lot of us as blacks, still trying to figure out what it means to be black. And too often we do it in the context of someone who's white. You have to find your own way. You have to find a way that establishes a, ground, a grounded base of knowledge of black, black America and blacks in America as a child so that you're free. But I had one very, very gigantic advantage that caused me to be the kind of person I am today. But I do think it's a lesson for a better future. My mom worked for United Airlines. And so I flew United since I think six years old up to present day. Then we were in first class. We flew just like anyone else was able to fly who could afford it, only we flew for free because mom worked for United. I was a boy. The white people that I met on the plane treated me with respect, with dignity, with uh, humor, with seriousness. I even met a fellow who was a developer at the time. I was like eight years old and loved my ideas and he wanted me to keep in touch with him. Sadly, I never did. White. That was in first class. That's the white America I came to know. So the idea that I didn't fit in never occurred to me. The idea of me needing to, ident to identify myself as black with respect to someone white wasn't in my head, okay? So today, we have a problem where people, us, are still trying to figure it all out. Kanye's trying to figure it out in his way. So is Teneche. That's not where we should be. We should be at a point where, like myself, I was able to adopt Walt Disney as my, my idol because Walt Disney had come up with a plan for something called Walt Disney World. So when I was eight years old, I wanted to decide I wanted to be in city planning, a city planner. I got my planning degree later at Berkeley and when designed my undergraduate major at Texas Arlington. I'm not saying I'm better or holier than thou. What I'm saying is I don't I, I don't understand the the anger and the fury and the and the rancor over what Kanye said. I just thought it was stupid. Sorry. And it's nothing not to put him down. It's not to put anyone down. I just don't identify with how he thinks about about the role of slavery. Slavery was a crime. The person who is the victim, the person that is enslaved, they don't know that there's a better way. They're being exploited. We were exploited. We were treated in a way that was criminal. Kanye has to understand that. It was criminal. So to say that slavery was a choice is to imply that the person enslaved knows that it's a crime and knows they can get out of it. No, 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 no. That's wrong. Kanye has to understand that. Teneche has to understand that you can be who you are as a person in black without putting down people who are white, without criticizing someone black for having ideas or traits that you might think are white. I call it whiteness. That's ridiculous. It's also insulting. We have to move forward or we're going to be stuck in our own slave mentality for the rest of our existence.